let's just give a few comments to people on BYD management for the autumn, especially seeing it's transformed now is after being revoked. So the aphids that spread BYDV in barley um, live on cereals and they live on grasses. Okay. So even if you didn't have a cereal beforehand, but you have a grass field beside you, technically that's a reservoir for aphids. Okay. Um, what, what, what you can, the main things to bear in mind is the importance of planting this, uh, the importance of if you are putting out a spray that you put out at the right time, if you plant it early and you need two sprays and the first one fails, uh, you don't follow with the same chemistry because you're selected for resistance. If you planted, say, in October, say like last year, if someone planted in October or maybe later and it was emerging in November and they felt, okay, I won't spray because, you know, I'm in a lower area and I plant slightly later. But if the winter had been very mild and it comes to January and it's still very mild, they can benefit from a spray. So January sprays were found in, in our trials and also Tom Kennedy's trials to still give um, control when you have a mild winter. Just to follow on the comment you, you were asked, asked about um, does varieties look different for BYDV? So just to comment on that, what you have is tolerance to BYDV, not resistance. So it's not going to look different because tolerance means that the aphid can still feed, the virus can still get into the plant, but it either can't replicate or it can't move around as much. So essentially it looks the same, but the idea is you don't get the yield impact. The caveat being that when you're developing tolerance or resistance to BYDV, that you're dealing with 11, 11 strains of BYDV and also up to 25 aphids that can spread BYDV. So to get um, tolerance or resistance to all of them is the problem. You're trying to, if it's tolerant to MAV, but you have MAV, then you know it won't work. So that's the challenge uh, with tolerance. And then, and then in terms of winter barley management, yes, so we're, we have some flux for transform this autumn, but then not after that. So that means we only have pyrethroids left. Now, from the trials we've done, pyrethroids were still given comparable levels of control to transform, despite there being partial resistance to pyrethroids. Um, that could be because uh, when you have aphids spread and BYDV in the crop, as I said, it can be multiple aphids. So a proportion of the aphids in the field are green aphid, and then only a proportion of those are resistant. And then it's only partial resistance, so you'll still kill like half of them. So pyrethroids should still, in general, give you control. Um, obviously, we don't know in a farmer's field, like on average, the, the resistance levels last year were like around 20%. You wouldn't know there could be a field that has had, you know, a, a repeated pyrethroid sprays and selected for a population. That particular field might have extra high levels and you might see spray failures. So IPM technique, is it viable for people to do that sort of testing or can they do anything else to help themselves? Yeah, so what the trapping you're talking about is yellow bowl trapping. So it's basically yellow bowl. Uh, you put a crop height and the idea is yellow is attractive to aphids and um, so they land in it uh, what we had farmers doing so it was around 17 sites around the country we had them um, putting the trap out for three days and only three days because then the aphid is intact enough for us to test the aphid itself for virus and resistance and they could do that then like roughly every two weeks on the growth stage 31 and why we're doing that is because obviously there's no thresholds for spraying um barley for BYDV nobody knows how many aphids is enough to cause risk and so you make your decision based on growth stage and temperature and um, we do have a suction tower network now so that's the 12.2 meter suction towers and uh, we have one in Dublin, Cork and uh, Carlo and the idea is to look at looking at different monitoring methods which would be most reliable for farmers so the current advice is for you to walk your crop to find aphids but walking your crop to find aphids can be quite challenging like depending on the species they may be down in the leaf sheet and then even if you do walk your crop, how much of your crop do you have to walk to be sure there's none? Because it doesn't take very many aphids to spread BYDV. So we're doing a project called the Aid Project where we compare all these different methods, so visual searching in the crop to yellow trapping to the suction tower, to see if any of them would be good at predicting for the farmers um, when the crop is at risk. So I can't say yet if it's a reliable method, but that's the whole point of the project. The project's only started this year. So we'll be doing this trapping for three years in spring crops and winter crops. And then every aphid is identified, tested for virus, tested for resistance, and then the corresponding crops also tested for virus to see, because there is so many different strains of viruses I mentioned, to see which aphid was the one bringing in the virus into the crop. Louise asked me, would we be able to host a suction trap here from now on? 
So there's a six meter suction trap. Yeah. Um, we have to find the location for it on the farm. And that six meter suction trap is going in here in September, is it, or October? Uh, yeah, it hasn't arrived yet. It's coming from Rottenstead. But basically what that is, is the towers currently we have are 12.2 meters. And that's selected because it's the logarithmic height for aphid flight. So you get more aphids at that height and less other insects. But there's also portable towers. Obviously, those are concrete in place. There's portable towers that you can get that extend two to six meters. So it potentially you could put them in more sites around the country. So we are going to have three of those um, and one will be here to test then if that's more predictable because depending on the aphid species like green aphid because it can live in both cereals and grasses it doesn't have to do as much long distance flight so we have to see are we missing that in the tower and is there more green aphid active than that's in the tower because for example in the suction towers in Ireland and the UK this spring the aphid activity was quite low but as we all know there's lots of BYDB so it's to look up what's the best way of monitoring